Welcome to the Freight Project Podcast, brought to you by Saracis, a North American third-party logistics company providing shippers transportation management technology and solutions. On today's The Freight Project podcast episode, I welcome Kristen Sheffer, the team lead for the Special Services Department here at Saracis. As with any first-time guest, you'll get to know Kristen's background as an expert in the logistics industry, having worked in helping shippers for several years. On the episode, Kristen and I will have a great discussion around best practices and tips to more effectively manage volume LTL, or sometimes referred to as partial truckload. First, Kristen will provide for us a definition of what is volume LTL so that we are all on the same page. Kristen then goes a bit deeper on the topic of volume LTL by explaining what are the types of moves our specialized services team works to make happen for our shipper customers and what types of move a shipper who manages transportation in-house might make around specialized services. Staying in the same lane, Kristen then explains to the listeners why managing these types of specialized moves are difficult in-house and what benefits shippers gain when working with a third party to manage volume LTL moves. Moving along, Kristen then shares the possible challenges shippers may face when managing volume LTL. And finally, Kristen shares some insights on the volume LTL or partial truckload market shippers are currently dealing with in the field. We hope you enjoy this episode of the Freight Project Podcast. Well, hello, Kristen, and thanks so much for being on as a valued subject matter expert on the Freight Project Podcast. As with any first-time guest, let's first get to know who you are. So, Kristen, if you can please tell the great listeners out there what you do here at Saracis and your experience in the logistics industry. All right. Well, hi, Adam. First of all, thanks for having me as a guest on the podcast. I'm a team lead for the Special Services Department here at Saracis. That department handles all shipments from our customers and vendors that fall outside of your standard LTL shipments. My experience in the industry, um, well, first let me tell you that to give you that information, we'll be revealing some very important information that my grandmother told me a lady never shares. (laughs) What was that? (laughs) Her age. Ah. (laughs) But now that you've backed me into a corner, I'll walk you through my journey thus far in transportation. I have worked on the carrier asset side of things and account management, um, driver dispatch, sales, partial truckload specialist, and in the brokerage side of things and transportation. I've also worked on the brokerage side of this business, handling all that comes with it, um, which if you look at it is pretty much Everything on the carrier asset side I mentioned rolled up into one position. And I've been doing this for about 28 years now. I started when I was seven, for anyone that's wondering. (laughs) So if you do the math, yeah, about 35 years old. And you didn't have to reveal your age, and so you made grandma proud. We just had to do a little bit of math, and we got it. So, uh, (laughs) But it does really sound like, and I say this about my career too, Kristen, that you really have your whole career has been leading up to what you're doing now. It really has positioned you really, really well to lead our special services department. And so as the team lead in our special services department, you work day in and day out, uh, not only with our staff and our team members, uh, but with our shippers uh, who partner with Saracis for more effective transportation management. And so that brings us really to the heart of today's topic. It's something we've not really talked about uh, on the Saracis blog or, or in anything we've done. And it's about how these types of services, these specialized services that you work on, help shippers get more out of their freight. Uh, They are more effective, but specifically out of things like volume LTL, partial truckload, other specialized truckload moves uh, and transportation moves. But let's first talk in specifically, let's make sure we're all on the same page with some definitions. So can you first tell us what Is volume LTL sometimes referred to as partial truckload? And then we'll get into the other services that the team provides after you define that for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Volume shipment is a shipment that falls outside of the qualifying guidelines of an LTL shipment when you're working in the scope of working with the national LTL carriers. So each carrier has very specific rules and guidelines we must follow to qualify our shipper's freight to ship LTL, um, and that includes such things as footage, PCF, the cubic feet, and the weight. 
And if a shipment falls outside of the individual carrier's guidelines, it then needs to be quoted as a volume shipment. And then we also look at a shipment to see if it would qualify as a partial with an independent partial truckload carrier. Uh, those carriers also have specific guidelines that need to be followed, such as how many feet of space it will take in the trailer, if it's no touch to the driver, how many miles the run is, um, the pickup and delivery expectations, just to name a few things. So um, beyond volume and partial truckloads, shipments then spill over to the truckload side of things, which is also what we handle. Yeah, and I want to get into that, you know, and, you know, thanks for sharing a little bit about volume LTL and partial truckload, but can you get uh, deeper into kind of some of those other moves on that truckload side of things and those other specialized truckload services that our team, you know, helps arrange and manage for our shipper customers? Sure. Um, As mentioned earlier in the podcast, our group handles anything that falls outside of a standard LTL shipment. So on top of volume and partial truckloads, our group handles offshore shipments, international shipments, uh, expedited shipments, same-day shipments when our LTL partners can't provide that service, uh, volume and truckload white glove shipments, truckloads that ship on vans, flatbeds, and other specialized uh, equipment trailer types. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a bevy of services beyond really our core offerings. And, you know, I think a lot of shippers or a lot of people maybe who don't ship on the day-to-day don't realize that these various opportunities are out there, or maybe they just don't have the time to look for them, right? And, you know, um, what what value does that provide these shippers when when they're able to kind of tap into those extra moves beyond the core LTL or full truckload? Um, you know, what, what kind of benefits are they realizing when they uh, are – are using these and and then what you know value do the shippers gain when they partner with somebody like a Saracis to really go deep into these you know types of movements? Yeah, I think by explaining our process, it will give an insight into just what we do as a group here in special services, um, the time we put into and the combined expertise we have hard at work for every request that comes into Saracis. Uh, all quotes that are sent into the freight desk at Saracis are first looked at to see if they qualify to ship as an LTL shipment. If they fall outside of those guidelines, they are then sent over to the special services agents. Um, we have essentially two teams within that department. One is volume and the other is truckload. They handle the quotes and requests for volume shipments and work with our partial truckload carriers They handle truckload requests for any type of equipment that come across. Again, dry van, flatbed, reefer, rail, conestogas, uh, just to name a few. Um, They handle the offshore international, expedited, but everything we talked about earlier in the podcast. So these teams are fluid in expertise on the guidelines, rules, and regulations with all our partner LTL carriers and truckload carriers. They understand the transportation markets, the rate structures, and the idiosyncrasies that come with each type of transportation mode we offer. They are expert negotiators and problem solvers. They have vetted, reliable, and trustworthy contacts in all aspects of transportation. They know their guidelines, what carriers will and won't handle for any specific requests. So Saracis has spent and continues to spend time, money, and manpower in researching, vetting, and qualifying carriers. We spend countless hours on in-house education to further our employees on their knowledge base of the transportation industry as a whole. Um, A a lot of brokers focus on or specialize in particular, a particular type of freight, if you will. At Saracis, we handle it all. So we pay for and utilize safety research software mileage and routing software, load board software. We employ people with industry knowledge and retain employees for the long haul so that expertise stays and is shared within our group. 
So you ask how shippers gain value in partnering with Saracis versus handling shipments themselves. And I hope I just answered that. Well, I think you did. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> So, I mean, we really, we look at every request that comes in on multiple different levels with multiple options with a company and a group of people that truly take pride in the outcome of the shipments that we are giving. I dare to say I have never heard of a loan transportation manager with the ability to accomplish by him or herself what our group of people does to assure our customers' needs are met and looked after on every level. I... You know, Adam, I would compare it to selling a house and not using the internet. I mean, you could oh, put a yeah. sale sign up in your yard and attract the very few people that utilize a route past your house every day and hope for the perfect person to drive by and, you know, want the house that they're looking, your house that they're looking for. Or with the click of a button, you can reach millions of people all over the world that are searching for exactly what you have. That's what our team brings in every shipment that comes across um, to special services, we look at it from every level. Well, I've got to tell you, that's a lot of, you know, deep help, right? You know, and I think you really made a really great analogy between, you know, selling a house and not using the internet. I think everybody would say that's silly. Um, and there's so many <laughs> websites out there for houses today. And it's created that demand that those that are not using it, frankly, just aren't going to get their house sold at the price that they probably could uh, if they if they did use the internet. And I think that's what it means for shippers, right? They have a lot to focus on, whether it be like last year, the capacity crunch, which caused a huge disruption in managing freight or, you know, uh, the tariffs that are happening right now is those folks are importing a bunch of goods to kind of get ahead of any possible tariffs. It really puts, you know, different pressures on when people offload that onto to trucks. And, uh, you know, as general rate increases occur and, you know, carriers may go bankrupt like in the Northeast um, recently with NEMF, you know, the freight uh, transportation networks change and you've got to be able to be flexible and adapt. And that seems really challenging for someone without a partner like Saracis, right? And so right. what are some of those challenges a shipper must think about when it comes to these types of specialized moves? And um, what should they think about if they are going to try and go at it on their own that they might face when they go about it? Sure. I think anytime you are a shipper trying to handle the transportation of your goods, your challenge is going to be assuring you have the right people in place and every aspect of the movement from the beginning, finding the best carrier for your specific needs of the shipment, knowing the different markets and knowing if you should explore other non-traditional ways of moving your freight um, other than the first and tried and true methods you've used before. So knowing which carriers can and will provide extra services, knowing their transit times and restrictions. Traditionally, this is done with one traffic manager who is responsible for handling multiple tasks in his or her day. I mean, this isn't the only thing that that person is responsible for. They're also responsible for being on the floor, for you know managing um, t other team members, loading trailers. So we have teams of people in place who are able to look at your freight as a whole and compare multiple ways to ship your freight while staying in the parameters in which you provide us. So we are not a traditional big broker, which gives you the advantage as a customer of knowing that pretty much everyone on our team is familiar with the ins and the outs of your freight and what methods we should pursue to get you not only the best cost, but the best service available. Yeah, that's where it's at, right? You know, and I think increasingly, I, I think I've been doing this industry now for about seven years and, and, and you would probably agree with this, that maybe early on 10 years ago, um, trust in a freight broker or a 3PL was not necessarily there. And, and I get it, you know, um, it was kind of folks would sh set up shop in a garage with a phone and the internet and they'd call themselves a freight broker and there might be right. a bad experience. And so it kind of hurt the industry at large. But over the last few years, especially where the capacity crunch came in last year and as disruptive technology really changes how we approach transportation management as a whole, um, 
you know, I th- it seems that shippers uh, are really turning to companies like Asaris or other 3PLs and freight brokers to really help them out because this is an ever-changing market. And as I explained, just with technology and different market forces like the capacity crunch last year, things are always going to change and you got to be flexible. And it's really hard to do it on your own without a partner. Um, so I think people are, are turning to us more and more. Uh, and, and I think one of the other advantages, and you really talked about it as well, is that our teams are truly being educated day in and day out. And as they're dealing with these various carriers and gathering data points in our system, you, you kind of start to see some trends. So as the team lead, with all this visibility into these partial truckload or volume LTL, whatever you want to call it, and these other specialized types of truckload moves... Uh, what do you think, in your opinion, uh, the mar- does the market look like in those types of moves? Uh, do you have any insights you can share with the listeners? Yeah, I think that, you know, the marketplace is different for all different modes of transportation, right? Um, what might affect the LTL carriers won't necessarily affect a truckload carrier or someone who specializes in white glove movements or expedited services. So, I can focus on the common denominators, which are, of course, still capacity and uh, driver shortage in all those modes. But for me, the one that stands out the most that not a lot of people talk about is in the truckload world. And this loss of over, you know, the last 15, 20 years, um, the large asset scaled carriers that have now given way to smaller mom and pop carriers in the market. Like right now, I think the last time I checked, there were over 500,000 registered truckload carriers in the U.S., but something like 80% of them have 10 pieces of equipment or less. What happens now is that where we used to live in a world where the larger trucking companies had lanes that were fluent and, and we had strong options on a big scale for backhaul lanes that could be covered for lower rates to the shipper, we lost a really big piece of that market. And when that happens, a larger rate increase over a bigger landscape that I don't think we've ever witnessed before. Yeah. So those kind of disruptive things or just (laughs) changes that are really changing the way the business is done, such as, you know, more uh, uh, bigger carriers versus now more smaller mom and pop uh, owner operators. Uh, well, you know, a shipper's got to be able to respond to that. You know, they don't necessarily mm-hmm. control those market forces, but they have to be aware of it and they have to appropriately align the right resources to manage it effectively. Uh, and it sounds like if they're smart, they partner with a company who has the resources to help them scale and really stabilize any of these disruptive market forces as much as possible. And your team is doing that on the front lines day in and day out uh, here at Saracis for our shipper customers. If you're a freight shipper listening to this and you really wanted to get a sense of how you can maybe go deeper with some of those truckload moves or look at partial truckload or often called uh, volume LTL, then you should take a look at Saracis. We'd love to help you out. So yeah, that's a sales pitch, but that's why we do this whole thing. And hopefully along the way as well, you get a little bit of education about the challenges and the state of specialized truckload moves and volume LTL from our team lead here at Saracis, Kristen. So Kristen, thanks so much for imparting the wisdom that you have on the listeners today and being a guest on the Freight Project podcast. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. Yeah. And for all of those listeners out there for our podcast, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.